oh, freedom, who cares, just get on with your job, whatever. What, what, what effects is it going to have on being able to get on with your job? Because that's, that's, that's socialism. That's what it does. It grounds everything to a halt. We have to pay lip service to insanity and then exist in another way. But who wants... That's not the country I grew up in. That's not Australia to me. And there's 227 parliamentarians at a federal level. 227. Seven of them are against the narrative. Seven of them are openly out or at least questioning the narrative. Uh, why wouldn't they be asking questions? That's what they're paid to do. Ask those questions on our behalf that we might be too scared to ask because we would lose our jobs. They've got parliamentary privilege. They're protected by it. There's only seven. My name on Neighbours was Gary, Gary Francis Canning, actually. It was one of the main families, like the Canning family, you know. I was the sort of the dopey uh, dad. What are you running as, Gary? Oh, or? No, 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 no way. I'm running as Damien Richardson, yeah, <laughs> an independent for the Senate. The fact that I ended up even in the protest movement was a really big consideration that I had to undertake because I knew exactly what it meant to be an actor. And to be an actor in this country and any country, that's why they've all got the same opinions. That's why Leonardo DiCaprio thinks exactly the same thing as someone who's working for a cooperative theatre in the back streets of Carlton. They all believe the climate change is terrible, it's going to kill us all, except Leonardo can fly around his own private jet aeroplanes and buy, you know, a mansion on the French Riviera and suddenly the, the rising waters don't seem to matter anymore. But you're not allowed to call that out, particularly if you want to maintain your role, you know, literally and figuratively as an actor in the arts community and working on mainstream television as I was. So I knew that, but I had found it very difficult for a long period of time not to be able to talk about these things because they're inconsistencies. They're glaring inconsistencies that exist in the culture to our detriment, ultimately, because if you continue to tell a lie, where does it lead eventually? And we all know that in our private lives. Eventually, the lie has to be followed by another lie, another lie, another lie until it's exacerbated to the point where it becomes untenable. So I had this concern before COVID well and truly before COVID, I'd be in green rooms trying to keep my mouth shut. And every now and then it would spill out. And I had detrimental consequences as far as um, ongoing work was concerned. There were times when I was uh, uh, not employed because of my stance, public, even if it was only mildly public. Uh, but eventually when Corona came, I, and I was sitting at home for a long time, I accepted the science to start with, but it didn't take long for me. I've had that feeling in my stomach, this is not right, this doesn't make sense. And there was a lot of inconsistencies that we've talked about as far as climate's concerned. There was those similar inconsistencies with COVID, what was an essential worker, what wasn't an essential worker, the bureaucratic measures that were put in place to bring about that is uh, the destruction, ultimately, of the culture. And it was a destruction of the culture. People that have built businesses up, people I know that have built businesses up over years and years and years, and it's easy for people to say, oh, well, it's just money, you know, at least they're safe. But it's not just money. It's a way of life, and it's who those people were and their meaning and meaning for their families and how they supported their families. So I was at home watching all of this stuff, seeing other people protest, um, probably yourself too, interviewing those people out and about, you know, particularly I saw you at the Black Lives Matter protest, trying to draw analogies to why was this okay, yet if someone was considered a freedom fighter or a neo-Nazi, and there's nothing better than a, a Jewish neo-Nazi, but again, all these inconsistencies don't matter. Well, they do matter. Words do matter. There is meaning behind them. I, and I, I just went, I, I felt like I, it was imperative for me as a human, and it was like a soul journey in some respects, I had to stand up. I had to stand up for me and my family, and, and in some respects too, my masculinity. Because what's a man if he just sits and takes everything, particularly because he's frightened of uh, having his materi material well-being taken away from him? Because that's the threat. That was always the threat to me in green rooms when I didn't agree with whatever the progressive narrative was at that particular juncture. The threat was, shut up or you lose your job. Did someone say that to me, Avi? And this is how it works. And we're like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. But the conspiracy is not someone taps you on the shoulder and says, you think this because if you don't think it, you've lost your job. You know, those walls speak. You know what's happening in that culture and where the mob mentality is. And you know to go along to get along. And that's what everyone does. It's also what the parliamentarians do. They go along to get along. You know, and I've got this great pithy line about l Labor and Liberal, you know, one's red and one's blue, but they're actually the same colour. And if you mix them together, you get purple. So they should all be walking around in purple because they're the uni party. They're the same party. And purple, of course, is the colour of the AEC, the Australian Electoral Commission, which is the bureaucracy that oversees it all. And I think there's something really pertinent in that. Not exactly sure what yet, but there's certainly something pertinent in that, you know. So, again, 
they go into that system and they want they want to make peace with the system because they know it's the system that is supplying them with their wealth and uh, their prestige ultimately going along. And if they come in as younger people too, particularly, they want to stay in that system. Is it to be a parliamentarian and ultimately get a, a job in a bureaucracy somewhere overseas as a diplomat or whatever else it is? You can see it. You can see it happening, but they won't rock the boat. So eventually COVID comes along. In Victoria, we saw an, a mass of people, which was extraordinary in the protest movement, and it has no political representation in the federal parliament. There is no Victorian of those seven members that I spoke of that are against the agenda, or at least questioning the agenda. None of them are Victorians. Yet the biggest protest movement, the most draconian lockdowns, that's what resulted in the protest movement, were in Victoria. So my thing is, well, why wouldn't there be a Victorian? And do, do I run as, try and run as a Liberal or as a Labor or as a Green or as a National? No. Even the UAP or the Lib Dems, they're all constricted by a party structure that demands what they are the talking points that those people, those representatives can have. Well, I don't need my talking points. I'm articulate. I'm capable of making my own arguments. And what I would say is I'd be elected by the people and I would represent those people because the parties don't. The party people, they owe their fealty to the party because it's the party structure that gives them that job in the first place. You work your way up, you're handing out how to vote cards, you're working in someone's office as a staffer and eventually you get pre-selected but you're running against all these other people within the party who you probably know quite well to get that seat at pre-selection. Is it a safe Liberal seat or a safe Labor seat? Who do you owe your loyalty to? You owe your loyalty to the people that put you, installed you there in the first place. So it's really difficult to run as an independent. I don't have the financial backing of the institutional parties but I have a voice but I also have an independence. So who elects me? And it is those people that I expect to be, would appeal to, that would be my natural constituents. And then there's a group working in construction who felt, you know, the mandates came out in construction and they held out as long as they could because they never wanted to take it. And they were even at the beginning saying, no way over my dead body, I'm not gonna. And whatever reason their resolve weakened, we know why it weakened, because they were coerced. You wanna go to the pub? You wanna be able to sit down and have a meal? You want to be able to pay for your family, your children's education, your mortgage, your bills, all this stuff was under threat because you couldn't work. And they took jabs too. And they're really, they're angrier than any members of the community because they never wanted to do it in the first place. And they feel like their government, their government forced them to take it. So what do you do, Avi? I protested. This is the democratic process. How can five or 500,000 people four weekends in a row have no political representation? Mm. How can they have none? That's a perversion and corruption of the system. And then to be admonished at a media level? What's the, where's the media in this? You obviously gave up a lot to join this freedom movement. Yeah. Was it worth it? Well, it has to be worth it. Yeah, it is, because now I don't have to skulk and hide in the shadows. I can say what I want to say. And in freedom and equanimity, and if someone's got to be an argument to tell me that what I'm saying is not truth, then by all means, I can't wait. Let Bring it on. If you think that these freedom-focused candidates deserve or should have a platform, even if the mainstream media refuses to give them one, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, share it far and wide. Then head over to OzDecides.com to sign up for our mailing list and donate what you can to ensure that we can continue to tell the other side of the story this election. A-U-S, OzDecides.com. And a little secret, we also plan to challenge some of the fake, you know, independents and those cowardly major party candidates that the media have given a free pass to so far. Watch this space, OzDecides.com.